Hello community, fine tune now code LLMs. Welcome to part two. So today we're gonna have a look how we can fine tune either a frozen or a normal code LLM where we can generate, of course, since we are fine tuning it, we will use our own special instruction based fine tuning data set. So how do we do this? Now, in this video, I showed you how you can configure your instruct fine tuning template for an optimal performance. And remember, I had four ways and I included symbol tuning or symbol fine tuning and the instruction configuration. If you would like to learn more about this topic, this is the video for you. But otherwise, we can just start. And you will remember, I just have to give it an instruction. Now, the simplest part is write a Python code sequence for prime numbers. I have an input and an output pair. The input pair I can say for the first 10 primes or whatever you have. And for the output, I just give it the code sequence that I would like my code LLM to remember and be fine tuned on. And as you can see, I work here now a lot of with functions where I define it is prime or generate prime. So please remember if you have here a title of your function that is really semantically correlated to the content of your code, this will prove important to be successful in the future. Another example, you can have an instruction that's a little bit more complicated. Write a Python code for a cosine similarity of sentence transformers with embedded vector representation of those sentences. And then here in my input output pair, I don't have to provide an input. You could specify something further, but I just say, I don't need here an input. I just need the output. And then here is my PyTorch exactly here for the specific model. So you can see, you can do a lot of, if you want to train if you want to fine tune here your LLM model further on your specific tasks. So this is it. Action call, be creative, create your own fine tuning data set. I would recommend with instruction, in my opinion, it is really valuable if you do currently an instruction fine tuning data set for code LLMs, because they will significantly improve the performance of your fine tuned extended code LLM. And to give you an idea, I have now created here for about a week now, here my own PyTorch code assistant. I have more than 100 specific functions that I have written that are now specific, for example, here to the sentence transformer expert operation. And I have included everything from creating semantic vector embeddings to a complete, really complex, high dimensional neural search, search algorithm. So these are my examples that I provide here for my specific fine tuning data set, because I want to create here right now in this experimental phase in this week's here, my own PyTorch code assistant that is really specialized and is really top-notch sentence transformer, expert operation focused. So whatever is your topic, give it a try. Fine tuning a code LLM. I will show you now in a free Colab notebook, but you remember, even if the out of the box model, like I showed you in my last video is not perfect. Never mind. It is the perfect building block you can build upon. We can absolutely optimize the performance of then our own specific code LLM if you are, have a specific task in mind, like for example, my sentence transformer with our fine tuning data set. And if you say, hey, I, I can't come up with it, I need a little bit of a, of a help for, to start off. Well, even think about this self-instruct fine tuning that we know and that we love when you ask a higher dimensional LLM, like for example, GPT-4 to do some automatic self-instruct fine tuning data set creation for you. Remember the legal licenses of GPT-4 apply, but just for research purposes and to get you started, hey, self-instruct fine tuning is always a way to go. 
But now I would say let's jump right into coding and fine tuning a code LLM. So if you want to see the codes to fine tune now our code LLM, it is rather easy. We have here our pip install Torch, Torch Vision, and Torch Audio. I use here a free Google Colab notebook. Second step is I install here the transformers. As you can see, this takes quite some time. And then I want to use PEFT, our parameter efficient fine tuning. So I install pip install PEFT git. As you can see, it takes some time to do, no problem, successfully installed. So you have accelerate and PEFT for you to do. And then I need the Hugging Face Hub and I need some data sets and those data sets. Yes, no problem at all. Installed, installed, installed. As you can see, beautiful, works out fine. And then interestingly, you have to install, of course, bits and bytes and WNB. As you can see, it takes some time, but beautiful. Now, next step is you have to log in to Hugging Face. This is easy, Hugging Face CLI login. And then you get the question, the token. Now the token, you know, where is it? Where is it? Give me a second. Here. Access token, user access token. I just did a demo here. And this is your token. You say copy, copy token to clipboard. And this is it. Congratulations. Next step. You have to do the same with W and B. You just say W and B login. Then you go to authorize, you have here a free account. You have to go give them their email address. You get a email back. Please confirm that this is your email. And where's my WNB? And then as you can see here, you go start it, integrate, and then authorize with your API key. You just say copy. So you have your API key done. If you have a login to Hugging Face and a login to WNB, finally, yeah, if you want, you can go now and say, hey, from Transformer, Big Star Coder, you know with a CUDA device, you have your auto tokenizer, your checkpoint, and here from pre trained to auto model for causal and language models. And then you encode, I don't know, the function define print hello world, and you will get this beautiful. Or, and this is what I will do, we want to fine tune this thing. So maybe I just tell you, hey, fine tune code LLM. Because this is exactly what we want to do. So at first you have to git clone your the star coder git cloning. Yes, yes, yes. So as you go now, you will see that you have here beautiful a star coder directory. And if you open it, you have here all the licenses, the requirement, the chat. And of course, what we are interested in is fine tune. You have here the fine tune Python file and the merge path adapters I'm going to show you in a second. And then it is rather easy. You just find the path, content star coder, fine tune, fine tune Python file. And then you have quite some parameters. You can use the help command. Or you just go with this, you have a model path, you have a data set name. These are the data where you do here the fine tuning on. You have a subset, the training size, the validation size, the maximum steps, the batch size, the income columns, the question response, the learning rate, the scheduler type, the warm up steps, the weight decay, and where your checkpoints are going to be. Beautiful. So let's start this. Let's see how it works. And then, of course, if you want to do here, use the parameter efficient fine tuning, the adapter layers. It is a simple Python command. Python fine tune and see merge path adapters pi, and you are ready. This is exactly this file. If you want to have a look at this file, no problem at all. Here is this file merge path adapters pi, and you see exactly what you have to do. You can push it to the hub, but this is not what I want to show you. I just want to show you how to fine tune this. And oh yeah, we are running. So at first we are downloading, of course, oh, gee, my goodness. 
Yeah, please be careful. Our star coder has about, I think, 70 to 80 gigabyte you have to download. So this is not a reason, as you see, we have three of seven. And as you can see, each port has about 10 gigabytes. So it is close to 70 gigabytes that you have to download on a free Google Colab notebook. Where is it? You see that this is not enough. As you can see, as we are loading three, we have, yeah. The disk will go on and on, and you do not have, I think in the free version, I never had 70 gigabytes available. So this will not work in the free Colab. You have to pay for Colab Plus, or you use exactly what I showed you on your, on your PC, on your laptop, where you have some, I don't know, 100 or 200 gigabytes free on your disk, and then you can do the computation. If you, uh, in our case, we go with a GPU, but if you want and you have some weeks, you can also run just on a CPU. No problem at all. You can even go here with fine tune here, a distributed fine tune, if you have multiple GPUs, but you will find all the information in the link I will provide for you in the description of this video. So as you see, we go on, the disk starts to fill up. We have only 23 gigabytes available and you see the disk size that I have in total is less than 80 gigabyte. So as you see, the disk goes now in the red and sometimes we will crash, but this is exactly how you fine tune a code LLM. As I told you, you the fine tune and the merge path adapter Python file. So what we do, what we do, nothing because we're gonna crash soon. Disk is almost full, you see. You can delete files or you pay Colab Pro. But $11 per month or you pay $11 per 100 compute units, it's up to you and Colab Pro $50, 50 euros per month, whatever you wanna choose. For me, it is rather easy. To file browser, yes, I know, to all my files, so I stop here now, the fine tuning. So whenever you wanna fine tune this particular, make sure you have enough disk space available. And for a GPU RAM, it will depend, but if you go with a 24 VRAM version, this should be enough. But of course, always remember, you can go either for here, BrainFloat 16, where you specify here your, your format with the torch tensors. Great, back to the presentation. Coding can be a really interesting experience and please do not forget in Hugging Face, you have here this beautiful tab community and there are questions from users that are working with this and they share their knowledge. So that's the question about the GPU requirement and there was this, hey, can we run here the implementation on an Apple M1 machine? And the answer by one user was, yes, if you use here floating point 16 or brain float 16 on one GPU, the model takes about 32 gigabyte of, of memory. And if you do it on an 8-bit model, the model requires about 22 gigabytes. So if you have four GPUs, yes, 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 you have accelerate bits and bytes for the 8-bit mode, you know this. And you see loading 8-bit is true, device map is auto, and you can run this on an M1 machine if you have here the 32 gigabyte memory model available. So you get an idea where you are on your VRAM requirement to run StarCoder. Now the next beautiful topic, of course, is cloud compute. So StarCoder, as I told you, 512A100, 80 gigabyte GPU, distributed 64 nodes. They are, were running a 32 fold data parallelism. Unbelievable performance. But the question is, are there other models that are better? Maybe we can continue to find you on them. And here we are here. This is a short overview. We have, you know, this Microsoft Copilot, 
Then we have the Code Whisperer from Amazon. Brand new, will come out, is currently in a technical preview only, is GitHub's new Copilot X. This will be based on GPT-4, so I have not seen this system in operation, but this is really something I'm looking forward to. And of course, you know, OpenAI has now the code interpreter in the alpha version for solving mathematical problems, but also for quantitative and qualitative analysis. And they have a beautiful visualization where you can really also see some nice graphs, two-dimensional, three-dimensional, presentation of your data. Google has the Palm Coder. This is a version of the Palm 540 billion fine-tuned on a Python-only code data set. So this will be really interesting if you work in Python. So I'm looking forward to this. And you know I am now focusing more on the tangible AI side. So there's also for robotics a multimodal so vision and human language interaction and 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 touch here this is palm e for embodied artificial intelligence and for the second part i will show you a very different model that they have chosen a different approach that is very interesting so you might ask now hey so how does it work how does all of those things work what is the inner working of our models and it is easy you remember when we have a human language text and then the frog. So what we do, we apply a tokenizer and we define our specific tokens for the training data set given. And then we have and is one token and then you see here in green the singular tokens. And this is what you know from a natural language LLM. Now you see and I showed you in the for example, Python code, you have a lot of human language information that you can read out. For example, if you have a class definition, the good coder summarize for you what's going to happen, what is, for example, the literature, where's the source here for this particular model they encode. So there's a lot of information that you can digest and it will help you to define the content of the code itself. But even the code itself now, if you look at this, you see there are a lot of what you are familiar words, so very easy for a tokenizer to run over this linear chain of characters. And I got a lot of questions. So what is the internal logic? Is there a, a logic program for Python in there? And the answer is no. This is a large language model. It's a decoder stack. And it is what you know. So either you have a human language expression that you tokenize, and this is a linear chain, and then you apply here the transformer architecture. You have the self-attention mechanism multi-head, or you go with fast attention for the computational benefits. But if you have this sentence, or if you have here a Python expression, for the machine, there's no difference. So this tells you here, everything is just a linear sequence of tokens that are encoded with our transformer architecture. But there are some beautiful differences between the architectural fine tuning and how we build our transformer, and they result in significant differences. But more about this in the second half. So summarization. If a transformer encodes a linear sequence of tokens from a human language, for the machine, it's identical to transformer and codes a linear sequence of token from a Python code sequence. Therefore, short interrupt, I told you encoder, you know the performance already, but in encoder, here from Facebook AI research, UC Berkeley, Carnegie Mellon, University of Washington, yes, yes, yes. Just want to show you this because they have a nice visualization of their and what you call here um, in filling. They call it here um, causal masking objectives. So what you have, you have here your code examples. You have here the definition of a function in Python. The name of this function is here, count the words of a specific file. So you have here then count the number of occurrences of each word in a file. 
and then you go. And they now take here for the training purpose because they are working on a decoder stack of the architecture. They take now here a certain block, a certain sequence of code. They cut it out and they put it at the end of the code sequence. And at the location, they say, hey, here is a mask. And this will remind you a lot of when I was talking about the encoder stack, about the BERT models, about the SBERT models, the sentence BERT models. There was this masking technique, do you remember? But since the architecture now is here, not a BERT model, but it is a GPT version, somehow they want to include the functionality of BERT in an architecture that is not optimized for it. So this causal masking objective, this um, infilling, is here a way that I want that you understand is here just pick some block of variable length, put it at the end, put there a mask token. So the system now learns, hey, there's something missing. And what is missing I find here. So if you have here millions and millions and millions of training example, the system understands here somehow the sequence, how the code sequence is supposed to be, because this mask will sometimes at the beginning, sometimes in the first quarter, sometimes in the middle, sometimes at the end. So you run through all of this and you learn here the system, the linear sequence of the code expansion. OpenAI developed something similar. It's called fill in the middle or FIM training objective. And this is similar to causal masking objective. So somehow they like to simulate here the encoder stack, the bird experience in a decoder architecture. So here we go now. Here we have now encoder, just showed you by Facebook. Copilot X that's based on GPT-4 from GitHub, brand new, will be, I think, a monster application. Then Starcoder now from 6 to 15.5 or 16 billion parameter from Hugging Face. And then I would like to show you an absolute outlier. 